In this video, we shall refer to the simplex method. This time, we shall refer to linear programming problems involving mixed constraints. We shall illustrate our deduction using the simplex method in tabular form. We have discussed how to transform constraints to standard form by adding slack variables, surplus variables, and artificial variables appropriately. To summarize, if the constraints involves less than or equals to symbol, we will add a slack variable to the left hand side. If the constraint involves greater than or equal to symbol, we will subtract a surplus variable and at the same time add an artificial variable to the left hand side. If the constraint involves equal sign, we will add an artificial variable to the left hand side. All these variables added are non-negative. Let's refer to the following example. We wish to maximize the objective function z equals to 2x1 plus 9x2 subject to the constraints 2x1 plus x2 greater than or equals to 10 3x1 plus 9x2 less than or equal to 36 and having both x1 and x2 to be non-negative. According to our rules of transforming the constraints, the corresponding constraints of this problem in the standard form would be 2x1 plus x2 minus e1, the surplus variable, plus a1, the artificial variable, equals to 10. 3x1 plus 9x2 plus s2, the slack variable, equals to 36. And we have all these five variables to be non-negative. Referring to the first constraint, 2x1 plus x2 greater than or equals to 10, it seems that if we subtract a non-negative surplus variable to the left-hand side, without adding the artificial variable, is enough to transform the constraint to an equation. Why is it necessary to add an artificial variable? We now give the explanation. Let's imagine we omit the artificial variable and we would have this system, which corresponds to the following table. We would assign S2 to be the basic variable because it only occurs in one constraint equation and its coefficient is 1. However, there is no basic variable in the first constraint. There is a problem here. We cannot multiply row 1 by negative 1 in order to make this equal to positive 1 because this will make the constant at the right hand side to be negative 10 which is not allowed. Because of this issue, we would like to add an artificial variable to the constraint as well whenever we have the greater than or equals to symbol. As a remark, a similar reason applies to constraints with equation sign. We will also add artificial variable to constraints with equation sign. Now, let us add the artificial variable to constraint 1 and proceed. Let's see if we come across other problem. When we have this objective function and these constraints, we would get this tabular form. Observe that negative 9 is the most negative among the coefficients of variables in row 0. The column representing x2 will be the key column. Since the ratio 4 is positive but less than 10, row 2 is the key row. After row operations, we will reach the system here, which indicates that the optimal solution is reached if we take x1 equals to 0, e1 equals to 0, s2 equals to 0, a1 equals to 6, x2 equals to 4, 
and the corresponding E set is 36. However, if we substitute the value of x1 and x2 to the constraints of the original system, we found that 2x1 plus x2 equals to 4, but it is not greater than or equals to 10. Our solutions fails to satisfy the original linear programming problem. Why is that? The reason is that the artificial variable a1 now has a value positive 6. And it is this a1 which also help contributing to make the left hand side to be 10. That is 2x1 plus x2 minus e1 plus a1 equals to 2 times 0 plus 4 minus 0 plus 6, which is equals to 10. Instead of just having 2x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10. Therefore, if we only consider x1 and x2 themselves, their sum of having 2x1 plus x2 was not enough to be greater than or equal to 10. This makes our solutions to be invalid, but this is not what we want. Now we come across a problem. We need to have a1 here because this helps us to get a basic variable for the first row. But if the value of a1 is positive, it will make the final solutions to be invalid. We wish to keep having the artificial variable, but at the same time, we would like to make sure that when the solution is optimal, this artificial variable takes the value 0, so that it won't contribute any positive portions at all in the left-hand side of the constraint with greater than or equal to symbol. To tackle this problem, we purposely subtract a very large multiple of a1 in the objective function. We imagine that this capital letter M is a very huge positive constant, let's say 1 billion. We can see, since A1 is non-negative, if we choose A1 to be any positive value here, after subtracting a huge positive number times A1, this will make EZ to be very negative. Therefore, in order to maximize Ez, we would take a1 to be equal to 0 in the final solution. Then it won't make any harm to the left-hand side of constraint 1. By doing it this way, we can keep a1 in the system so that it gives us the basic variable we need for row 1, and at the same time, we can force a1 to be 0 successfully when we reached the optimal solution. Now, the linear programming problem is transformed to the correct standard form. Let's solve this by the simplest method. This is the corresponding table of our linear programming system in standard form. We subtract m times a1 in the objective function. So, when we move to the left-hand side, it is having positive m for the coefficients of a1. Please remember that, before looking up for negative coefficients of the variables in row 0, we have to eliminate this m at row 0 using row operations first, and leaving all other rows unchanged. This can be done by multiplying negative m times row 1 to be added to row 0 to get a new row 0. After executing this row operation, the new row 0 is shown below. The coefficients of a1 becomes 0 in the new row 0, and all other rows are still unchanged. From now on, we proceed the same deduction of the simplest method as in the past. So at this stage, 
we will check whether there is still negative coefficients for variables in row 0. If yes, we pick the one which is the most negative. We keep in mind that the constant capital letter M is a huge positive number. So now, among all these coefficients here, negative 2 minus 2m is the most negative. Hence, the column representing x1 will be chosen to be the key column. After we have chosen the key column, we inspect the values of this column in the constraints equations and if it is positive, we calculate the ratio of the corresponding right-hand side value to this positive value. Among this ratio, we pick the one which is the smallest, and this should be a positive value. In this case, because this ratio 5 is the smallest, row 1 is chosen to be the key row. So we wish to make this number 2 to be 1, and all other values in this column to be 0. Using the following row operations, we get the third system, as shown here. Our convention will be to take x2 equals to 0, e1 equals to 0, a1 equals to 0, x1 equals to 5, s2 equals to 21, and the corresponding ez will be 10. But this solution is not yet optimal since there are negative coefficients for some variables in row 0. The column representing x2 is now the key column and row 2 is the key row. After this row operations, we reach the fourth system. There is no more negative coefficients for variables in row 0. Therefore, if we take E1 to be 0, A1 to be 0, S2 to be 0, X1 equals to 3.6, X2 equals to 2.8, and correspondingly Z equals to 32.4, then this solution is optimal. Therefore, the maximum is 32.4, which is achieved when X1 equals to 3.6 and X2 equals to 2.8. We can double check that this time the solution fulfills the original linear programming problem. With x1 equals to 3.6, x2 equals to 2.8, we get 2 times x1 plus x2 exactly equals to 10, which means it still fulfills this inequality. And 3x1 plus 9x2 equals to 36 which also fulfills this inequality. Notice that we have a1 equals to 0. It didn't contribute any value at all at the left-hand side of the constraints. Therefore, it is 2x1 plus x2 which gives a value greater than or equals to 10.